Welcome to Everyday Bonsai. Today I'm talking about sacrificial branches and why I think they are such an important and overlooked part of bonsai, first of all, and secondly, why I wish somebody had told me before I started my journey. So let's get straight into it. So this video is really from everyone from beginners to advanced bonsai artists. I have picked out six examples that I would like to show you and explain um, the sacrificial branches on. They're all different species and all very different in their development. We've got three conifers, two broadleaf evergreens and one deciduous tree, which is the one here on the left, which is a maple tree. Um, the tree can be pot grown or in the ground. And the reason really that I would like to, um, that I think it is so important for beginners, is that this really sets up the future of the tree and its whole development. A lot of people want to take a tree, give it a trim, put it in a bonsai pot and have an instant bonsai that can just be maintained and developed. There's kind of the instant gratification. And sometimes it's possible, but you have to be very lucky to find a tree like that. But what that really does is that it immediately slows down the growth of the tree. So if you want to grow a tree with a bigger trunk, more ramification and generally more vigorous, you're better off developing it for a few years before you put it in a small bonsai pot. Because a bigger training pot, which these ones are, are in, um, basically means more root development, more foliage, more water that you can put in the pot, more fertilizer, and all of these things create more and faster growth. And when you are happy with its size and development, then you put it in the bonsai pot. And that's exactly the aim of it. Once it is in that pot, we don't want massive growth anymore, just refinement. So this is the first tree that I'm going to show you, and it's a New Zealand native Totara tree, which I absolutely love for various reasons. And I basically selected it out of about 50 trees. And that's kind of where the design already starts, I find, <clears throat> by selecting the right tree that has the right growth and the right development potential. So um, I basically had a look and thought it was already really nicely developed um, just down here. So it's got a lot of little side branches, as you can see. Um, and they are all really usable for development. And so it's about a two liter, con two liter container. Um, it's got already quite a nice base to it. Um, it's probably, what is it? It's about maybe two centimeters in, in trunk diameter. And to me, this is the kind of, this is the kind of tree that I'm gonna, gonna be using. So this is probably gonna be, this branch here is probably gonna be the apex. And then I'm gonna develop the, the side branches as the main branches. And all of that stuff from here upwards is sacrificial at the time so once it has put enough energy into this trunk and into the tree and I've developed all of this foliage down here then I will cut all of the rest of it off and um, yeah it just helps to really develop the tree rapidly the next tree on the list is um, also a totara tree, so another New Zealand native conifer. So this is a golden one, a golden totara, and um, as you can see, um, it's a bit overgrown now, but it has developed um, quite well over the last year. So this is probably about six to eight years old. Um, I've got the 
primary branches kind of developed to a certain degree and um, it's now about to, to get more in, into the detailed development. The, the kind of apex is developed. I'm kind of happy with the overall movement, but this, um, this branch here, and I just might just put a towel on top so that you can see it better. Um, <clears throat> this branch here is the kind of sacrificial branch which is probably has more foliage on it than than the rest of the tree but what it does again it really helps to um, develop the tree and to make the trunk fatter the trunk is already quite nice it's about five centimeters in diameter at the at the base of the trunk and i probably i would say i probably leave it for another year or two see how how it develops it's just coming out with a whole new flush of growth which is um, not easy to see but um, in about two weeks it'll be fully flushed out and they have about three or four flushes of growth every year so they put on a massive amount of growth and they're super easy to grow here obviously because they're native and they are totally pest resistant I haven't had any issues with any of the tortoise that I have um, yeah and then I'm probably gonna gonna cut it off at this point here and make a nice gin feature out of it so this is the second tree so number three on the list is this Kaizuka juniper it's a Hollywood juniper and I planted it as a tanuki onto this piece of driftwood that I found on the beach. It's an amazing, gnarly, old, full of character piece of um, timber that um, I'm gonna use as part of the design. And the idea is kind of that I'm forming an apex up here and then kind of conical shaped um, coming down on this side and then forming this part of the branch is kind of forming the, the backdrop of the, the frame, if you wish for the finished tree. And in this one, um, I've also got three sacrificial branches, at least three sacrificial branches, because I'm not gonna use all of the ones below here. So this one I've already um, air layered. This one I've got already air layered. So they probably need another, another two months to, to um, be taken off. And then another branch, at least another branch, which, which is this kind of thicker one, um, this one here, is going to be air layered next year. And then I've got all of this um, part of foliage to work with. And um, what it does is now it creates um, more strength for the tree again. And um, yeah, I think it's already at a point also where one has to be a bit, bit careful with sacrificial branches because um, the tree might decide that this is enough foliage to go on with and that it might not put too much um, resources into into this this tree so that's why i thought like it's a good point to to air layer it now air layer these ones take them off in about two months and then all the resources um, all the food that goes into these three branches will then go into the upper um, part of the foliage again. So number four on this list is the last tree that I'm going to show you here inside. Um, the other two trees are outside. This is um, a Japanese maple, so a deciduous tree. And I've already taken a whole lot of air layers off this tree as a, as a donor tree. Um, and I'm just, as you can see here, I've just done it with um, another branch here that I'm going to take off in about four or six weeks. And then I've got another tree just from this branch. Um, I'm going to do the same with another two branches. And then I'm kind of happy with um, this as the, the, the rest of the tree that I'm going to develop in into a, a bonsai. Um, it will just be a more formal upright tree and if i just take that away a bit so 
I take this one off, take that one off, and then this um, will create a bit of taper for the tree and um, form a nice kind of backdrop and a nice um, structure for, for this tree to go on with. So for this, I'm going to take you outside because the last two trees are two evergreens that I am developing and um, one is in a in a pot which is quite interesting I mean this is the kind of row of plants that I just put up initially to give the neighbor a bit of privacy and give us a bit of privacy from the neighbors on the other side um, but already with the um, thinking in mind that I might bonsai those trees. So there are two manukas um, and the rest is kind of various kinds of pittosporum, other um, New Zealand native trees. And I'm talking particularly about that one here, which was about maybe a meter and a half high and about a centimeter thick when I when I got it and within kind of three years that I've had it it's developed a really really nice trunk base so it's about uh, maybe seven centimeters um, across in Nibari and then like this is an interesting one because it's so different to all the others because it's basically that all of the branches here are kind of sacrificial branches. And what I've managed to, over the years, by just clip and grow, is basically that I have developed a really nice ramification, like a really nice branch structure. But from kind of, from kind of here on, everything is kind of boring and it's just, um, it's just foliage. Um, but to me that's kind of where the where the tree is it's kind of the the whole height of the tree is here and once I have chopped those those down I chop them down from from time to time um, eventually I will chop them all down to here and <clears throat> what happens is that the, the foliage grows back really nicely and really easily from as you can see here even from kind of kind of older branches um it just pops out these these new shoots and then then starts from there so that's going to be a very interesting one once i bonsai that and the last tree it's not this one but this is also a magnolia like a nice big garden tree it's about say about six meters tall by now um, but another magnolia tree, and that is the one that I've thought about bonsai as well, is this one here, which is a magnolia figo. Um, I have found it in the backyard, and it's probably it's probably 40 years old or even 50 years old. I'm not sure. It was probably planted when the when the property was established, and. They don't grow super fast, but they are really, really sweet. They've got these really nice little white flowers and the trunk base. I mean, that is completely insane. It's probably, the Nibari is probably 60 centimeters across. Um, so that's my hand here. You can see it kind of starts here then goes all the way to the other side down there. And my idea was kind of, it had been chopped down. As you can see, those those branches are pretty roughly chopped, um, but they shoot out um, very easily. So I've since chopped it another time um, because it was another two meters tall. And now I've kind of chopped it down to nothing and now it's coming out with another super cool flush of growth. So. I don't know, it might be too big to take on, I'm not sure about it yet, but um, all of these branches that had been hacked out of that also were 
just kind of sacrificial branches to um, develop this tree further so this could be carved and then all of this foliage could be used um, to, to grow a nice tree out of it but as I said it's a massive undertaking and it would require a huge pot and um, I'm kind of undecided at the moment. So the takeaway from all of this is probably um, yeah just don't rush into things too much um, and let your trees develop I mean put them in a, in a in a bonsai pot once you think it's right for it but don't rush into it once the tree is not ready and the tree is not developed to a degree that you want it to be um, yeah I hope you like the content um, give us a like if you do and consider subscribing to the channel as always thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video